I've built hundreds of components with Framer Motion at this point. The documentation is fantastic, but when building animations, it's kind of hard to know what you actually need until you need it. Let's see some of the tips that I wish I hadn't skipped over before putting hundreds of hours into this framework. I'll be assuming that you know at least the basics of Framer Motion. If not, I have an hour long crash course on my channel that should get you up to speed. Link in the description for that. Let's get started. So this first tip still trips me up all the time, if I'm being honest. Hopefully this helps me remember this a little bit better. But all that I have here is this little box that rotates 90 degrees as it goes through the viewport. I just have a ref that I'm passing to my use scroll hook, and then I'm taking the scroll Y progress and passing that to the use transform hook and actually mapping those values to a rotation value between zero and 90 degrees. So this is pretty normal stuff if you've ever used the use scroll hook before. The problem here is maybe I don't actually want the animation to start once the element is fully within the viewport and stop whenever it's all the way up at the top, or I'm saying viewport, it could also just be whatever the container element is that you pass to use scroll. Maybe I want it to actually start the animation as it's entering the bottom and continue until it's all the way exited out of the top or any other variation of that. Now, the way that we can do that is using this offset value. I have a couple of examples here, and this is going to take a list of strings. Each of these strings will have two values. The first value in either of these strings represents the position of the target element, in this case, like our little blue box. And the second element in the string represents the position of the container element and where those meet. So in this case, I'm saying I wanna start my scroll Y progress whenever the start of the target element or the top of the target element meets with the end of the container element, in this case, the bottom of the viewport. So if I'm all the way down here, the bottom, it's saying that the top of my container or my target element meets with the bottom of the container element or the viewport. And I want to run that until the end of my target element meets with the start of the container element, or it goes all the way up to the very top end of the target element meets with the start of the container element. Another example of this would be something like this. So what I'm saying now is I want this only to run whenever the start of the target element meets with the start of the container element or the very top. And I want that to run until the end or the bottom of my target element in this case meets with the start of the container element. In short, all that I'm saying is I only want this to rotate once it gets to the top and continue rotating as it kind of rotates itself off the screen. Now you actually don't have to just pass the start center end values. You can also pass in things like percentages or pixel values. So what I'm saying here is that I want to start this animation whenever the top of my target element gets to the middle of the screen. And I want it to rotate until hundred pixels above my target element gets to the top of the screen. So like that. This is a pretty tricky one for me for whatever reason. Honestly, anytime I do scroll animations, I still need to mess around with this to get the actual values that I'm looking for. But anyways, let's move on to the next one. So here's another one that honestly took me a little longer than it probably should have to fully get through my head. And that is that motion values, like using the use motion value hook like this, really aren't to be treated exactly the same way as like a use state hook would, even though you can, and sometimes I will say something like X dot set directly and then change this value to something where it's really useful is just for tracking the state of a motion element and then changing something else based on that. So by example, all that I'm doing here is I have this value for X setting that equal to motion value, which is setting to zero immediately and then passing that into my style tag right here. I'm then logging it out using this use motion value event hook. And I've added some drag constraints here so I can drag this element and we'll see that as I drag it, it's actually setting that state for me. I'm not having to call like a set state call or something. It's just tracking it and updating it in real time. Now, because of this, I can derive other values based on this value. So as a couple of examples, I'll just kind of drop these in here. Maybe I want to also change the scale in the background based on this X transform. So I'll say like, as I drag it left, maybe I'll make it bigger. And as I drag it right, I'll make it bigger or maybe I'll change the background color based on where I'm dragging it. We can drop these values in so we can see what I mean. Now, as I move this to the left, it turns red. And as I move it to the right, it turns green. So I have a slight bug with my code here. Let's take a look at why. This example is very similar to the last one. I just have this motion value for my X transform on this draggable div. And then I have two different color stops that take in X and then animate between a couple of different colors. I'm trying to pass this into this motion div as a linear gradient. So I'm passing in both of my color stops, in essence, giving me an animated linear gradient gradient but we're seeing that there's not actually anything showing up here. And that's because a normal template literal like this doesn't actually know how to handle a motion value. Because a motion value is not just a normal value and this isn't reactive state. So what we can actually use instead is the use motion template hook like this. Essentially, this works exactly the same way as a normal template literal. You just prepend it with this use motion template hook and this will give you back a value that you can pass in as a motion value. And now we actually have our animated linear gradient as we drag our box. For this next example, I just have this spinning box and all that I want to be able to do is pause the animation whenever I move my mouse over it and then play it again whenever I move my mouse off of it. Obviously, there could be other things that trigger this play and pause, like clicking on a button or whatever it may be, but we're just going to use that for this example. In order to do this, we're going to actually have to take a little bit of a different route from our normal kind of declarative animations like this. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of those. I'll come up to the top and create a motion value for rotate and then pass that into my style prop. And then what we're gonna do is just directly animate this rotate value. So open up a use effect, empty dependency array is fine. And then we'll just directly call using the animate function, which also is an import that you can get from frame or motion. We'll call that function and pass it in our motion value. So rotate, which starts at zero. And we're saying that we wanna animate that from zero to 360 degrees. And then we'll just pass in our normal transition values. So the duration is five seconds the ease is linear and the repeat is infinity. Now this will return a value for essentially your animation controls. So if we look at controls dot, you can see all the different methods that are on this like play and pause, which is what we're looking for. To be able to actually store this somewhere, I'm gonna come up to the top and I'm gonna create a ref, which I'm just gonna call controls ref. And then I'll just say controls ref dot current and set that equal to these returned controls. And then down on my div, I can just use those controls whenever I want. So I'll just say whenever my mouse enters this div, we want to pause the animation. And whenever it leaves, we want to play the animation. So we have our spinning div, I mouse over it, it pauses, I move my mouse off and it plays again. I've found this to be super, super useful for things like animating testimonial carousels and stuff like that. So by default, you can add the drag prop to any motion element and that will make it draggable. This has a little bit of a problem though, because it has no constraints and I can just throw the card way out in the middle of nowhere and there's really no way to get it back. In order to fix this, I can define specific constraints using the drag constraints prop. What I'm saying here is I only want to be able to drag this 200 pixels up 200 pixels down, 100 pixels left, and 100 pixels to the right. So now, even if I try and kind of throw this, it's gonna hit a brick wall. We will still see though, that we have kind of this elasticity whenever we try and drag it outside of that box. So it kind of lets me like drag it further than the bounds, but then it'll squish it back in. We can define exactly how elastic that effect is using the drag elastic prop. And if we set it to zero, it's just gonna essentially act as a brick wall. So now if I get up to any of the edges, it's just gonna stop. It's not gonna have any kind of over drag effect. Now, maybe this isn't exactly what we want, Want, maybe what we really want is just to remove that ability to throw the cards off the screen. So what we could do if that's the effect that we wanted is just to remove those and add a drag momentum equal to false. Now I can take my box and I can drag it wherever I want, but it's not actually going to be throwable. So if I drag it way up here, I can still go back and get it. All these props together make for a pretty flexible drag experience that should match just about any needs that you may have. If you're interested in more frame or motion stuff, that is a big part of what I talk about on this channel. I even built a component library called hover.dev specifically for animated UI components. If you're looking to up your frame or motion game even further, I think you're going to get a lot of use out of that. A like and a subscribe would also mean a lot if you guys found this to be useful. I will see you guys next time. Peace.